This is Earnings Preview, a look at companies reporting during the week, along with companies which may have positive or negative earnings surprises. Well, time certainly has flown because this earnings preview is for the week of June the 29th through July the 3rd. Can you believe that, that we're almost at the 4th of July? It's right around the corner. And here with us once again to shoot his mouth off, I mean comment, is Charles Roteblood, our senior market analyst at Zax.com. I just hope pie. Ne <laughs> never uh, yell or scream. I think I covered that pretty well. <laughs> um, earnings uh, for second quarter going to be rolling in in a few weeks. As we sit here, though, waiting for that to happen, you think stocks are going to continue suffering from earnings revisions and downgrades? Yeah, I don't think it's so much downgrades. I mean, we are seeing some second quarter reports coming out um, for the week just ended. We actually had better than expected numbers from Micron, Palm, uh, Monsanto, I believe, Beat, Bed Bath & Beyond. So we actually are seeing more positive surprises than negatives. I actually ran the numbers, and out of the 19 S&P 500 companies that have reported early, 14 have beat, and the, margin, the margins of surprise are pretty big. So pretty good start to earnings season. Uh, I, I do expect pretty light volume, though, really till we start seeing the bulk of earnings reports. Uh, we'll have Alcoa be the first official report on July 8th. Mm -hmm. So we're still looking at a period of time where we're just going to kind of muddle through in the markets, kind of light volume, directionless, and we'll just see uh, how things go. But I think most people are going to win on the sidelines until probably the second half of July, once they start seeing what earnings reports are and really seeing what guidance is in reaction to those earnings reports. What is going to be important for you to see happen with regard to 2Q earnings as they come out? What trend are you going to expect to see to know that we're you know on the right course here? Well, I think the big thing is that earnings are actually better than feared. Uh, we're not going to have great sales numbers. We're not going to uh, see, you know, earnings coming from organic growth. It's really going to be cost cutting and sales numbers that are, in fact, did better than most people thought. And I think as long as we have that, which is really what we did see during the first quarter, and as long as we see more of it in the second quarter, and we get some guidance that's okay, it doesn't have to be fantastic, but it just has to show that companies have a sense of what's going on, and they do see signs of improvement, and at least, or at least the pace of deterioration slowing, and they do feel like the second half of the year is going to be better than the first half, I think that'll actually help stocks and maybe give stocks a boost. And you actually think that second half will be better than first half? Well, I do. Certainly, when you look at all the economic data, it's all getting relatively better. We're still in a recession. Uh, I do expect at some point during the second half, we'll see start, start seeing some signs of growth. Uh, a lot of people are, are depending on the fourth quarter for us to actually move into that positive territory uh, for GDP. Uh, it does seem like it's a possibility. All the indicators are now going in the right direction in terms of getting better than they were before. But I should point out to people, we're still contracting. The U.S. economy is still going downhill. So although the pace that we're going downhill has slowed dramatically, uh, we're still headed in the wrong direction. But we are seeing all the economic data become less and less bad, and that's moving us towards stabilization, which is a good thing and a big step in the right direction. All right. In the meantime, uh, while we're waiting to get to the second half of uh, the year, um, it's a short week this week, holiday on uh, Friday, the 3rd of July, is a holiday for many people because the 4th is on a Saturday this year. Correct. So you think a lot of people going to be, a lot of participants going to be cutting out from the markets early this week? Well, absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people are taking the whole week off. And it's interesting, on Thursday, July 2nd, we're getting the non-farm payrolls out a day early. Yep. And so you're looking at a day where a lot of people are either already on vacation or maybe they're in New York and are thinking about trying to uh, get out to the Hamptons or just, you know, try to beat the traffic on the Long Island Expressway. I know that's where I'm going. <laughs> exactly. Terry's house out there in, uh, in the West Hamptons. But, uh, you know, I think it's really going to be kind of interesting. I think we could have the, well, we have the potential for a big market swing on Thursday mm -hmm. in one direction or the other, uh, a couple hundred point move on the Dow. Uh, but I think people need to understand if we do have that, it's going to occur in light volume. We're going to see most of the volume skew to the morning because some people might show up early to see what the employment numbers are, make some adjustments, and then get out of town. Right. Um, but I think for the most part, when we look at the uh, market over the next seven days, I think people need to realize it is a holiday week, and they kind of need to take things in that, really in that consideration, that it is light volume. Um, and therefore, we could see a little bit more volatility than we have seen, but really, I wouldn't read too much into the week's activity in terms of 
how the market moves. Obviously, you want to pay attention to the economic data, to the earnings numbers, see how everything looks, but don't get too caught up in how the market actually moves. Yeah, it's kind of curious to me, though, that uh, that the uh, unemployment and the non-farm payrolls data is going to be published ahead of the holiday, uh, probably so that everybody's got that long weekend to digest those numbers. Huh? Yeah, they're just getting the data up early. I was actually expecting it to be delayed a week, but uh, just the way the data is coming up and the way the calendar is rolling out, I guess they determined they could get it out a day early versus waiting an extra really eight days to put it out there. And it's, it's one of the few occasions where we'll actually see non-farm payrolls and initial job uh, claims come out on the same day. Right. Not very often, just the way the, the calendar works. Um, but we are seeing everything really squished in in terms of economic data between Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, the earnings data is going to be a little bit more spread out throughout the week. Uh, we do have some companies actually reporting Monday after the close, but uh, it is going to be a short week uh, and really a very light earnings calendar. Just 19 companies reporting, four of which are in the S&P 500. And if you want to check out that earnings calendar and you're accessing this video outside of Zax.com, then get over to Zax.com's homepage and look on that homepage until you get to Charles' picture. The headline right next to it says earnings preview right up on the top for the week of and the headline is next to his picture. Uh, click on it. It'll take you right to all of that information. It's got the economic calendar there. He just sorts it all out for you in great order. With Charles Roquelot, I'm Terry Ruffalo.